Um, so I think when you give a talk about uh, something called generalized whatever, the obvious question is, well, what is this generalization of? And it's a generalization of algebraic data types. This is a thing that was invented in the 1960s, uh, 70s in the old programming language. And the idea is that you can store one of several data types in a value, and the value will remember which one it was for you, and then you can pattern match and uh, process them in whatever way is appropriate for that data type. Um, these uh, algebraic data types then spread out to many other statically typed functional programming languages like uh, SML or Haskell, and it would look something like this. Uh, so you have a keyword that would introduce the declaration, uh, which is data here. Then there's the name of the data type, either, and a list of type parameters, A and B. And then there's a list of what we call constructors, which uh, tell you basically well, what can it be. It can be a, a left. Uh, in that case, it has a parameter of type A. And it can be a right. In that case, it has a parameter of type B. And if you compare this to the uh, Scala translation, you can see that the Scala version is uh, a bit more verbose, but it's largely the same. So you have a, a keyword to introduce the data type, then you have uh, keywords for the constructors, uh, you declare the parameters, and you have this extends clause, which is basically just an artifact of the fact that we are trying to port over uh, an idea from functional programming to a language that is basically object-oriented. But uh, there's one essential difference, and it's these type parameter lists. And if you look at the Haskell example, well, you don't have those type parameter lists uh, for the individual constructors. You uh, only have a type parameter list for the data type itself. And what Haskell basically does is it assumes that you want your constructors to take the same type of parameters as the data type, uh, as the algebraic data type, so the seal trait. And uh, so in Scala, we emulate that <coughs> by making that explicit, by declaring it with the same parameter list and then just forwarding those type parameters that we got. And the obvious question is, well, uh, we have a bit more flexibility here. We, there's things we can do in Scala that we can't uh, do in Haskell. We can have the case classes take additional type parameters. Or we can leave some out and fill in uh, a constant when, in the extends clause. And the question is, is that in any way useful? Can we do this to do some, uh, use this to do something in interesting? And it turns out that the answer is yes, um, because this allows us to reify type information into a value, and then later on recover it through pattern matching. And there is what I would call a failed example of that in the Scala standard library, uh, and it's this equals colon equals type, um, and it's meant to reify the fact that A and B are the same type. And as you can see, there's, it's an abstract class. It extends uh, A arrow B, or function from A to B. And it doesn't have any methods other than the apply method that it inherits from the function type. And the only way to create an instance of this type is to call this uh, TP equals method in the companion object. And that makes sure that the two type parameters will always be the same. But yeah, you can use this to safely cast from A to B. But it's otherwise very limited, because when you, when you say that two types are the same, well, you ought to be able to implement these, right? If A is the same as B, well, then B is the same as A. But with the type in the Scala standard library, there's no way to, to implement this function. And also, there's uh, this uh, substitute function at the bottom, which says, if A is equal to B, well, then so should f of A and f of B. Um, that is uh, the essence of equality that Leibniz defined in probably 1700, whatever. Um, and yeah, 
with uh, GADTs, you can actually implement a more useful version of this. Uh, and it will look, look like this. You have a sealed trait uh, is with two type parameters. And you have only a single uh, case class extending it. And I mean, uh, if you look at it, this looks a bit silly, right? Because you think, well, what could this possibly be useful for? There's only one value that we can create of that type. It seems isomorphic to a unit. But uh, it's actually more interesting than that, because as you can see, REFL only takes one type parameter and is uh, and it uh, instantiates the two type parameters of is with like with the same with that type parameter. And you can't express that with the Haskell syntax that I showed earlier. So this is a strict generalization. And here's an example of how you can use that. Uh, and I want you to take a look at the signature. So it takes a value of type A, <coughs> the value of uh, type is A, B, and it returns a B. And if you look at the body, uh, inside the pattern match, we return A. And, well, why does that even compile? Because I said I would return a B, but uh, A is of type A. Why does that work? And the answer is that the Scala compiler is actually smart enough to figure out that when you, uh, if uh, f is actually of type refl, uh, then those two type parameters must be the same. And as far as I'm aware, that is the only way to find out something about type parameters that are not previously constrained. Like I haven't, cons uh, I haven't declared a to be a subtype of b or something like that. Um, but after I've done the pattern matching, uh, it does understand that. And now, we can implement all these uh, combinators that I was talking about earlier. So <coughs> I can implement uh, flip, uh, if A is B, then B is A. I can implement substitute, um, <coughs> if A and B are the same, then F of A and F of B are the same. And there's the third variant here uh, that basically works the same as a substitute, except it works for binary type constructors. And yeah, and there's one, like if you want to try this for yourself, watch out for the one at the bottom, because uh, I believe this is a Scala compiler bug. Uh, if you use the syntax at the bottom, it's not going to work. You always have to use the uh, pattern matching syntax with the colon here, and this one is not going to work. Um, so I think this all sounds pretty abstract because why would you even need such a type? And so I'm going to show why that is useful in an example, which is a small expression language. And we're going to have three kinds of expressions. There's going to be number literals, there are going to be variables, and there are go there's going to be function application. We want to be able to safely evaluate expressions, we want to be able to look up variables in a map. And, well, once you're done evaluating the expression, you, you probably want to do something with it uh, in your program. And you can only do that if you uh, cast it to a useful value. So this is um, basically a description of what I just, uh, a Scala translation of what I just said. So we have an, ex uh, an algebraic data type with uh, three constructors. This is not a GADT. Um, and here is an example of how you might use this. Note that in the apply constructor, both the function and the argument are general expressions, so we can express uh, higher order functions here. And we need that to be able to implement binary operators, for instance. Um, so in this example, uh, I'm just adding two numbers. So how can we uh, evaluate expressions? Uh, you can probably already tell from the uh, type of the function that this is not going to be the safe implementation. Um, if it's a number, well, we return that. If it's a variable, we look it up in the map. 
And if it's uh, a function application, well, then we need to first evaluate <coughs> the function expression, we need to evaluate the argument expression, and then uh, we hope that f is actu actually <coughs> a function, which we have no reason to assume, really, and we apply it uh, to the argument, and we hope nothing of this blows up. And if you look at this, this is quite easy to get wrong. There's a lot of, um, you can, <coughs> Uh, for instance, you can apply A to F instead of applying F to A. Or you can return expo in the first case instead of num. Right? Uh, there's nothing, that, the Scala compiler doesn't help us here. Um, as instance of is never a good idea. And because of uh, erasure, we can't even be sure that once we've evaluated an expression and cast it to the type that we want, is actually not going to crash. And it might happen that you evaluate an expression at startup, and then your server has been running for three weeks, and at that point you find out that the type is, um, the, the value is actually not what you thought it was. Uh, and your um, program crashes. And as you can see in this example, the cast will work fine, and the actual function call is what will explode. And so the idea is that we need to reify the types that our expressions can have into values and do type checking. So this is the method <coughs> that we're going to use to describe the types in our expression language. And it's fairly simple. It's uh, a double type or D type. And, or it can be a function type which can be it can be a function from some type to some other type. Uh, but if you look at this declaration, you probably see that there's something missing, uh, and that is uh, we haven't given the compiler any information yet about what, what these mean. <coughs> and the way we do that is we add a type parameter to the type type, <coughs> and we fill in, or we instantiate that type parameter to the type that the relevant constructor uh, is going to describe. So if it is a function type, then we instantiate it to function from A to B, and if it's a D type, then we instantiate it to double. And then we need uh, this data type, and this is the type that we are going to store in the map for the variables. Because if we want to do type checking, we need to have the uh, variable uh, uh, the value and its type together because otherwise we don't know what we're dealing with. And <coughs> we are going to need uh, this function to evaluate the value and this function to do the type checking. So what is the what does the type checker look like? Well it takes descriptions of two types A and B and it will check if these two uh, if these two are these two types are the same. And if so, it will return a proof of that in the form of uh, the is instance. And uh, the implementation is not very complicated. Uh, we match against the two types if they're both double. Uh, the Scala compiler now understands, oh, A must be double and B must also be double. And hence, we are allowed to call the uh, REFL case class constructor. And if they are both uh, function types, well, then it's a little bit more complicated because now we need to recursively check the function uh, argument types and the return <coughs> type. And one thing I would like to point out here is the uh, syntax, uh, the pattern matching syntax for the second case. Because I think many people probably don't know that there are Many people believe there's two ways to create a type variable. That you can declare a type variable on a data type, or you can declare it uh, on a method. But you can actually create new type variables um, in a case branch. And you do that by spelling the uh, type variable names with a lowercase, like these arc1 and red1 and arc2 and red2 types. I don't actually need it here, because the Scala compiler is 
smart enough to figure out what the type arguments to substitute to need to be for this to work out. Uh, but sometimes that is not the case and it is very useful to be able to give names to types that you know exist but <coughs> the Scala compiler sometimes has a hard time giving a sensible name to. Um, and another thing that is interesting here is that this uh, code is basically impossible to get wrong. I suppose you could always return none, but like if you if you give it an honest attempt, you're probably going to end up with this implementation. Um, yeah, of course, if one is double and the other is a function type, well then they are not the same. This is the function that will evaluate or attempt to evaluate a function call. Uh, it takes the parameter of type f and the parameter of type a and uh, descriptions of the relative types. And now we need to look, well, if what I hope is a function type is not actually a function type, it's a double instead, well then I can't call the function, I return none. If it is a function type, well now I need to uh, check that the function's argument type is the same as the type of the uh, value that I'm trying to pass to it. And if that is the case, then I can do again uh, pattern matching and the, the compiler now understands, oh yeah, the, the argument types actually match and therefore I am allowed to do this function call even though the compiler has no reason to assume a priori that uh, f is, is even a function type, uh, much less a function type that I'm allowed to call with an argument of type A. Um, and this is the last piece that we need to put this together uh, if we're trying to evaluate a number we just return that and we package <coughs> it with the double type um, if it is a variable we just need to look it up and if it is a function type well then we need to recursively uh, evaluate the function and its argument and then use the eval apply a function that we defined earlier, and it will do the right thing. And uh, I, uh, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but I find it really exciting that this is impossible to get wrong, because we get such strong guarantees from the compiler. Uh, if the <coughs> compiler checks for us that uh, we wrote our own type checker for our own little compiler right, and I find that really awesome. Uh, there's of course, <coughs> Uh, a million generalizations that you can apply to this. You can extend it with all sorts of other types. Um, one interesting one is this one, where you add another uh, higher kind of type parameter to the make value uh, constructor, or to the value type. Um, and that's interesting because now you can have all sorts of effects in your, you can uh, have functions that fail with an error, you can have side effects, you can have a read on monad in there. And all these actually are, are very, very useful um, when you're working with uh, expression languages. So that is uh, what I've got. Thank you very much for listening.